Let's look into why we have seasons here on the Earth. And what we have is the Earth is tilted um, to the plane of the ecliptic by 23 and a half degrees. So we have sunlight falling on the Earth. And you can see here in the summer months that the Earth is more directly falling on the northern hemisphere. So it's going to be warmer in the northern hemisphere during the summer months. Um, the sun at the summer solstice is directly overhead at this point on Earth, and we call that the Tropic of Cancer. Also notice that the sun will shine um, all day here on this region of the Earth, and that's what we define as the Arctic Circle. Down here, we see that the sun does not shine on this region of the Earth, and that's the Antarctic Circle. So the sun's more directly on the northern hemisphere in the summer. In the winter, um, we are tilted away from the sun, and you can see that the Arctic Circle gets no sun, where the sun does not set on the Antarctic Circle, and the sun is directly overhead on the Tropic of Capricorn. So the northern hemisphere has summer during the summer solstice, and the southern hemisphere will have its summer at the winter solstice. The axis of the Earth is an imaginary line on which the Earth rotates. It links up the two poles. Both the axis and the Earth are tilted at an angle of 23 and a half degrees during a revolution. The tilting of the axis results in direct sunlight falling on different places during different seasons. This causes variations in the duration of days, nights and seasons. Relationship between the location of the overhead sun and the seasons. Similarly, the revolution of the Earth and the tilting of the axis results in different angle of the sun during different periods. When the sun is directly overhead, we call this the overhead sun. At this time, the Earth's surface and the midday sun forms a 90 degree angle. Different locations of the overhead sun results in variations in the amount of solar radiation received in different areas and at different periods. Spring Equinox on the 21st or 22nd of March. The overhead sun is over the equator. The equator receives the largest amount of solar radiation. At this time, the northern hemisphere is in the spring equinox, while the southern hemisphere is in the autumn equinox. The angle of the sun decreases towards the poles. On this day, the two hemispheres receive a similar amount of solar radiation, and the length of day and night is the same at all places on the Earth. After this day, it is spring in the northern hemisphere, where the day is longer than the night. In the southern hemisphere, it becomes autumn, when the day is shorter than the night. Summer Solstice On the 21st or 22nd of June, the overhead sun is over the Tropic of Cancer. It receives the largest amount of solar radiation. At this time, the northern hemisphere is in the summer solstice, while the southern hemisphere is in the winter solstice. The angle of the sun decreases towards the poles. On this day, the length of daytime of the northern hemisphere is the longest in the year, while that of the southern hemisphere is the shortest in the year. Besides, there are 24 hours of daylight at the Arctic Circle and 24 hours of darkness at the Antarctic Circle. Autumn Equinox 
on the 22nd or 23rd of September, the overhead sun is over the equator again. The equator receives the largest amount of solar radiation. On this day, the northern hemisphere is in the autumn equinox, while the southern hemisphere is in the spring equinox. The angle of the sun decreases towards the poles. On this day, the two hemispheres receive a similar amount of solar radiation, and the length of day and night is the same at all places on the Earth. After this day, it is autumn in the northern hemisphere, where the day is shorter than the night. In the southern hemisphere, it becomes spring, when the day is longer than the night. Winter solstice. On the 21st and 22nd of December, the overhead sun is over the Tropic of Capricorn. It receives the largest amount of solar radiation. On this day, the northern hemisphere is in the winter solstice, while the southern hemisphere is in the summer solstice. The angle of the sun decreases towards the poles. On this day, the length of daytime in the northern hemisphere is the shortest in the year, while that of the southern hemisphere is the longest in the year. There are 24 hours of darkness at the Arctic Circle and 24 hours of daylight at the Antarctic Circle. So, in the northern hemisphere, we can see that the sun rises and sets further to the north um, during the summer months and further to the south during the winter months. So, summer solstice here, um, we have the sun at this point at the equinox and then the winter solstice. So, this picture is in the southern hemisphere since the winter solstice has it coming further to the north. Um, we can mark the points of the seasons um, with the Earth's orbit around the Earth. And the four points that we use are the vernal equinox, um, which is the first day of spring. And that's when the sun is crossing the ecliptic. Um, the summer solstice, which is the point where the sun is the furthest from the Earth. Um, the autumnal surface equinox, where we cross the solar ecliptic again and the winter solstice where the sun is actually the closest to the Earth. So we also observe the moon as having phases, and we will come back and talk about those phases in the next lecture.